Hi, I'm Ashley Heidemann from JD Advising. Here we're going to do a little Q&A on how I scored a 180 on the MBE. And instead of having one person ask me questions, I just answered questions that were submitted by our students. So I'm just going to go through them one by one. So the first question, when did you take the bar exam? I actually took the bar exam in February 2011. Some people wonder why I took a February bar exam. I took a February bar exam because I graduated a little bit early. So instead of completing law school in three years, I completed it in two and a half years. Um, I just wanted to get it done with. And so I was able to take the bar exam earlier than the rest of my class as well. I actually found it quite easy to study for a February bar exam. I wasn't studying with the rest of my classmates, so I wasn't really stressed out in that way because I wasn't constantly talking to them about studying. And I also found that it was um, easier to concentrate during a Michigan winter when there's nothing to do anyway than it is during a Michigan summer where there's a lot to do and it's nice outside. So I was pretty happy with the February bar exam experience overall. How many MBE questions did you answer? This is a really good question. So I answered about a thousand MBE questions in total before the bar exam. I actually think this is a pretty good number to answer. A thousand gets you exposed to how the material is tested, so you're not going to be surprised by what you see. Um, but yet you're not going crazy answering questions. Some students will say something like, oh, I answered 100 MBE questions a day, or I answered 5,000 MBE questions in total. And then they're surprised when they fail the bar exam. But the MBE is not going to ask the same question twice. So really what you want to get good at when you're answering MBE questions is the technique of answering questions, and you want to see how the law is tested. So you can do this by answering less questions, but slowing down and answering them more effectively to learn this technique. I actually, we had a student who answered a total of 124 questions in our class, and he passed the MBE with a really high score. And um, I don't recommend that, that's too few. But he told me, he was like, it's true, the less you answer, you know, if you can answer them effectively, you can still score pretty high on the MBE. And again, I don't recommend that, I recommend about a thousand, but his point's well taken. It's not necessarily about quantity, um, it's more about quality of answering questions. What do you think made the biggest difference in your MBE score? So this is a really good question, and there's actually three things that I think made a pretty big difference in my MBE score. The first was memorization. Um, a lot of people don't realize that the MBE tests the details and nuances of the law. So um, some students, in fact, it's probably the most common mistake I see students make, is they'll go right from lecture to answering questions, so they don't take time to memorize in between. That's a huge, crucial step that they're skipping out on. And then what happens is they answer a bunch of MBE questions. They don't do well because they haven't had they haven't memorized the law yet. You know they're missing that kind of crucial step. Um, so they'll answer questions. They'll get a low score. They'll feel frustrated and anxious. They'll answer more questions, and then they're kind of in this vicious cycle of answering questions and never seeing their score improve despite putting in a lot of effort. So I think it's very important, and I think it made a big difference in my score to take time after lecture to actually memorize the law. If you memorize the law, then you're going to be at a big advantage when you go to answer questions. Um, and it also makes memorization easier if you do it every day or every week rather than waiting till the end. So it's a big, it's a thing that made a big difference in my score. And it's one of the things that I see make a huge difference in our students' scores. Um, another thing I did was I slowed down when I answered questions. So I didn't race through them. Instead, I would kind of dissect the facts, dissect the answer choices say, why is this fact in here? I would try to answer the question before even reading the answer choices if possible. I'd try to recite the rules, make sure I had them memorized. So I would really take each problem slowly. Um, the people who study the MBE, a lot of the researchers say, you know, how many questions should you do a day? You hear people say, oh, 30 or 50 or 100. They say you should do six questions a day and it should take you an hour to do them. And um, that's kind of the approach I took as I slowed down and I would answer them like with a better quality, even if I wasn't doing as many questions. And then the last thing that I did, which I think made a huge difference, was I wrote down when I got an answer wrong, uh, why I got that wrong. So for example, if I got to a question, it tested a hearsay exception I didn't know. Maybe I uh, forgot the elements of dying declaration or statement against interest or something, and I got the answer choice wrong. 
Well, instead of just reading the answer explanation, which is what a lot of people do, they say, I got the question wrong, I read the answer explanation, I understood why I got it wrong, and then I moved on to the next question. Instead of just doing that, I would actually take the next step of writing down the law that I didn't know. So I had like a legal pad and I would use just one line. I limited myself to one line per question. And if I forgot the elements of dying declaration, I'd write down, okay, here are the four elements of dying declaration. And then I'd review that legal pad pretty regularly. Um, so I had like one page for each subject. I'd have evidence on a page and then, you know, real property, torts, everything on its own page. And before I answered evidence questions the next time, I review all the law that I didn't know the previous time. And that kind of turned a weakness into a strength. And if you think about it, it makes sense to do this. Like if you go to lecture, let's say you listen to your evidence lecture and it takes you two days. Do you know your whole outline? Do you have everything memorized after the second day of that lecture? No. Um, in fact, if you don't review it right away, you're probably going to retain about 1% of the lecture. Uh, you need to make an active process of reviewing it over and over again. That's how you remember something. And it's the same with getting a multiple choice question wrong. If you just read the answer explanation, you're doing way too much. You're going to forget that. You'll probably see the same question again and get it wrong. Instead of just reading it, you actually have to write it down and repeatedly review it. That's how you actually improve your score on the MBE because you're going to turn your weaknesses into strengths and learn the law that you didn't know. So I think those three things probably made the biggest difference in my MBE score. How did you learn all of the law for the MBE? This is a really good question. A lot of people struggle with just the massive amounts of material they have to learn. They get these big boxes of outlines and they feel intimidated. Well, what I did and what I recommend people do is just take it one outline at a time. Um, I'm not especially good at memorizing. Uh, some people say, oh, are you like a, a, do you have a photographic memory? Do you memorize really easily? No, I don't. I just put in the time. And if you put in the time, you'll be fine at memorizing. No one's really bad at memorizing. They just don't know the technique, so they don't put in the time. And so therefore they don't memorize and they think they're bad at memorizing. But I promise you, you're not. Um, so what I would do is I'd start with an outline. Like, let's say I learned evidence in week one. I would um, try to learn that outline in week one. I would divide it into chunks, into sections. So I would say like, you know, instead of trying to learn the whole evidence outline, like all 50 or 60 pages at once, which is unmanageable, I would say, okay, I'm going to learn 10 pages at a time. I would learn those 10 pages, then move on to the next section. And I found that that made it much more manageable. So it's hard when you say like, oh my gosh, I have this huge stack of outlines to learn. But you also have a lot of time to learn that those in. And if you just take those outlines and you divide them up, you try to learn, you know, a few a week, however many, and then when you learn the outline, you don't try to learn the whole thing at once, just learn a few pages at a time and keep adding to what you have already learned. And it actually won't be that bad. It's actually more manageable than you think it is um, if you do it that way. You also have to remember to keep reviewing them, though. And this can be the tricky part is if you learn evidence in week one, you can't just not learn it again or review it again. You actually I recommend reviewing it every week. So what I would do is every week I would write down all the subjects I knew on a whiteboard. And every week I would make sure I went through all those outlines at least once and made sure that I had them memorized. So it took some time because I was like reviewing again, basically, but it was necessary because that's how I kind of kept it memorized. I kept, I, I retained what I already learned. Um, so that's a good technique. If you are short on time because you put off memorization like a lot of students do, then it's good to focus on the highly tested areas of law in the MBE. For example, negligence, um, hearsay, relevancy and reasons for excluding relevant evidence. There are certain areas that are tested more than others, so focus on those rather than the areas that aren't tested as much. And that should help you kind of get started. But the best thing to do is memorize all along and not just like wait till the two weeks before study period, for example. It will help you improve your scores and you'll feel better if you just make this part of your routine from the very beginning. On MBE day, did you use any specific strategy for answering questions? For example, did you answer them in any particular order? That's a really good question. So on MBE day, I didn't answer them in any special order. I just started at question one and went to question 100. What I did do, though, was I used what I call like a dot dash system. Um, so if I didn't know a question at all, like I had no idea, I was just guessing, I would put a dash by it. Like right on the Scantron sheet, right by the number, I'd put a dash. If I knew it, but I wasn't completely confident, like maybe I'd want to review it again if I had time, then I'd put a dot by it. 
And basically, I went through the questions pretty quickly. I got through all 100 pretty fast. I tend to be like a pretty fast test taker. And then I went back to all of the dashes that I had marked and I reviewed those. And I would spend a little while on each of those questions. I mean, I had the time at that point. I knew that I had at least made it through the end of the Scantron. And then I went back through the dots and I reviewed the ones that I you know, wasn't completely confident on and I made sure I picked the best answer choice. And I found that to be an effective strategy for me. I got through all the questions and I didn't worry too much about timing because I knew that I was gonna make it through all 100 questions um, on my Scantron. Did you feel good about the MBE when it was over? I actually didn't feel too bad about it. I was just so glad that the test was over, to be honest, and I think that's what a lot of people feel. Um, I didn't feel too bad about it. I felt like I passed. I didn't feel like I got a 180, but I felt like I passed the MBE I in the bar exam in general. So I didn't think I would have to be back sitting and retaking the bar exam again. So that was a good feeling. When I took it though in 2011, remember, there were 190 scored questions. So there were 10 unscored test questions. Um, right now, there are 25 unscored test questions. And why does that matter? It matters because when I took the bar exam, there were 10 unscored questions. And these are the questions that they're, they're just testing to see if they're fair. So a lot of them aren't fair. Um, and they won't make the cut to be a real scored question in the future. But when, uh, when I took it, there were only 10 of those. So there were 10 questions that were probably unusual or weird or that I hadn't studied. And actually, I remember them being Civ Pro questions for the most part because civil procedure was not a subject that was tested when I took the MBE in, in 2011. Um, that was added a few years later. So now there's 25 of those unscored test questions. So you have potential to see a 25 of like weird, unusual, wacky questions, maybe some that test really recent law. Um, so students now generally, I think, feel a little bit more anxious about the MBE, even if they did well, because they tend to remember all those kind of unusual questions that they didn't know the answers to rather than the questions that they felt good about. What was your best and worst MBE subject? So I don't remember what my best subjects were, but I do remember that I liked real property and contracts the best. I tend to like those kind of nuanced. Uh, subjects. I also like evidence a lot now, but at the time, real property and contracts were my favorites. And my least favorite and my worst subject was constitutional law. And that's because I tend to be kind of a linear learner. I learn things in, in processes and constitutional law is more of a global subject. Like you kind of have to map out how all the pieces fit together. And that's not what I'm really that good at. Um, I got to be much better at it through practice and through learning my outlines, but at the beginning it was probably my worst subject. How many full practice exams did you complete before the bar exam? So before the bar exam, I actually just took one full length practice exam. So this was basically six hours of multiple choice and five hours of essays for me. And I felt that that was good. I don't typically struggle with timing and I don't struggle with anxiety. So I didn't feel like I needed to sit through a bunch of practice exams. Um, sometimes like for students that really struggle with timing or they really struggle with confidence, um, they should take more than just one full practice exam, or at least they should take more like three hour sections of exams just to make sure that their timing is okay for real for the real bar exam day because you don't want to run out you don't want to fail the bar exam because you run out of time basically. So for some people, I'd recommend taking more practice exams. For others, just one will suffice like it did for me. What tips can you give to someone who is studying for the MBE but not seeing their score improve? That's a really good question. So the biggest tips I've kind of already talked about, I would slow down, don't answer a million questions, just focus on answering less questions, but answering them better. I would also um, make sure that you're writing down what you don't know. So if you get a law wrong, write it down on a legal pad, keep reviewing this. You should see your score improve just by doing that alone. And then lastly, I would make memorization a priority. So for example, if you're really struggling with contracts, stop answering questions and just spend a few days memorizing your contracts outline the best that you can. And then after that, go back and see if your score improves. I bet it will. A lot of our students who struggle, especially with particular subjects, will see their score improve quite a bit after doing that. Um, lastly, see if a private tutor is right for you. Some people don't realize what a big difference a private tutor can make, especially if you hire a good one who has a lot of experience. Um, 
And like we've had students, for example, that have taken the bar exam like eight or nine times. And literally the tutor makes a huge difference in their score and they pass the next time. And they say, I wish I would have done this earlier. You know, they just kind of waited until they got completely desperate. So if it's something that you can afford, I would consider looking into that sooner rather than later because they can find exactly what your areas of weakness are and see what kind of changes you can make to, to uh, combat those. And it's more effective than just taking bar exam after bar exam, hoping that your score improves and kind of using the same techniques over and over again, which is generally not a recipe for success. So those are my answer to your uh, answers to your questions. Thank you so much to everybody who submitted a question.